ओके वी हैड फिनिश्ड जुडिशियल रिव्यू एक्टिविज्म पब्लिक इंटरेस्ट लिटिगेशन टूडेज लेक्चर इज ऑन द पावर्स ऑफ द हायर जुडिशरी now powers of the higher judiciary are often grossly misunderstood and grossly complicated but questions from the powers part are more important for the prelims than it is for the mains and you get very very tricky questions from the powers in the mains you get larger questions on judicial review activism pil separation of powers but the inherent powers of the higher judiciary is more important for the prelims than it is for the mains and i will do it in a way which is a little more conclusive in nature there are a lot of conceptual errors that are often there in court textbooks so we'll do this as officially as we can theme 6 topic 2 higher judiciary four powers now when we refer to the powers of the higher judiciary what is it that we first understand that with respect to the powers of the higher judiciary we will keep the supreme court as the base and we will cover the powers of the supreme court in great detail and only give limited references to the high court because the powers of the high court are very technical in nature very customized to the respective state in nature so at the most you have to do a cross comparison and a little bit of a cross reference when we do appointments when we do transfers we do them equally but when we do powers of the higher judiciary you always give more importance to the supreme court than what you give to the high court that's something that you must understand so when we do supreme court powers we'll do a quick cross check as to whether the high court gets to do this or not now there are five powers of the supreme court when i refer to powers what i am actually referring to is jurisdiction as we understand jurisdiction from our earlier lectures on 32 jurisdiction is the power of the court to hear a matter and there are five jurisdictional capacities of the supreme court five number 1 original original jurisdiction means this is when you can reach the supreme court directly or the supreme court can directly hear these matters this is called original jurisdiction to appellate now appellate jurisdiction means that you're reaching the supreme court after you have gone to another lower court now generally what will happen is with appellate jurisdiction you are already in a different court in a lower court but appellate has many multiple concepts review petition curative petition special leave petition transfer petition i'll cover all of those but appellate jurisdiction simply means you are coming to the supreme court from another court you are not directly coming to the supreme court do we understand this yes from a lower court to a higher court then you have something called extraordinary appellate jurisdiction in rare cases in extraordinary cases when you can reach the supreme court on appeal you were already somewhere else and now you have reached so extraordinary appellate jurisdiction is an exception or special case scenarios to appellate jurisdiction 
these are called extraordinary appellate jurisdictions for example a special leave petition is an extraordinary jurisdiction it's not ordinarily granted do we understand this all right then you have something called advisory jurisdiction when the supreme court it is advising the president or is advising any other entity we've covered this partially in the president but there's also more that has to be covered and fifth commonly left out but hugely important this is called the plenary jurisdiction plenary or plenary if you'd like to call it that is an overall jurisdiction the jurisdiction of the court to inherently do justice whatever the court can do to make sure there is just application of law so review petitions curative petitions all of these will generally come under plenary with a little bit of influence of appellate but broadly these are your five major jurisdictions now through these five major jurisdictions there are some special kind of petitions that the supreme court entertains one of them is called a suo moto petition right on your own the second is something called a transfer petition a transfer petition is a combination of mild appellate and plenary it is actually completely different from what you think it could be transfer petition is not transfer of cases to the supreme court when i come to transfer petitions we will talk about it third as i was mentioning before you would have heard of something called a review petition and beyond the review petition the last step which has recently been created because of remember in article 12 i had given you a case called hurra versus hurra it is in that case the supreme court has given guidelines for curative petitions the last point of judicial redressal so you have something called curative petitions okay now these are your primary jurisdictions these are some special kinds of cases that we entertain and at the same time we understand two major concepts parallelly one we use a word called court of record that the supreme court is a court of record and two that the supreme court is a court of contempt which means it can punish for its own contempt so when we actually study jurisdiction it is a combination of three themes theme a you first understand the broad kinds of jurisdiction theme b you understand certain special cases and theme c you understand the character or the personality of the court that you are a court of record or you are a contempt of court do we understand this simple enough okay now we start with what is called original jurisdiction <coughs> original jurisdiction of the supreme court and this is where the books get it wrong are actually mentioned in multiple different places it's not just within the supreme court chapter of the constitution the first and the most important original jurisdiction of the supreme court is nothing but article 32 yes or no you have to go to the supreme court directly 
under article 32 you have the right to go to the supreme court directly so the supreme court is the first court that you can go to for a fundamental right violation so article 32 effectively becomes the original jurisdiction of the supreme court and you have to give it to the vision of the makers of the constitution that article 32 is actually contained in part 3 article 32 itself is a fundamental right article 32 itself is protected as one of the rights of part 3 which means it is categorically given under article 13 clause 2 that no law can violate a fundamental right in part 3 so no law can violate article 32 that is the kind of special treatment article 32 has been given as far as your rights are concerned so under article 32 citizens and in some specific cases even non-citizens can approach the supreme court directly for the court to enforce their fundamental rights and the court gets to enforce their fundamental rights through issuing something called writs we studied the five kinds of writs habeas corpus mandamus prohibition certiorari and quo warranto and these writs can be used to enforce any right under part 3 are we okay with this this is your first original jurisdiction then you have something called article 131 article 131 is what you most commonly find in your textbooks article 131 grants the supreme court original jurisdiction in the cases of center state disputes now article 131 becomes important because it correlates federalism to independence of judiciary and that is the key point for the prelims exam federalism written constitution and independence of judiciary are very closely interlinked you need to have a written constitution so that powers can be categorically divided between the union and the states the fact that you have the union and the states makes you a federal country and if there are going to be powers that are divided there are always going to be disputes for you to have handled those disputes impartially you would require what is called independence of judiciary so article 131 is reflective of this holy trinity the trinity between federalism a written constitution and independence of judiciary this is a standard prelims question under all circumstances do we understand this yes okay so article 131 allows you for these kind of disputes these disputes are going to be between the center and the states simple number one number two center plus state on one another or on one hand versus state two state three etc on the other this is also possible and state one versus state two are we clear on this so what we have effectively created is a combination of all formats of disputes between the center and the states however there is a very important term and condition that important term and condition is that if the dispute with respect to the center and the states is with respect to the sharing of water then even the supreme court is barred 
from getting into those discussions to getting into those disputes and article 263 if you remember that article though the article is not even important but you create what is called an interstate water tribunal every tribunal has to be backed by an act so we have the interstate water disputes act and that interstate water disputes act allows you to create what is called an interstate water disputes tribunal all water sharing problems will necessarily be going to this tribunal but you will often hear in the news the supreme court has given some verdict around this how does this happen please understand this once the tribunal has given an order that state 1 has to release x gallons of water to state 2 and state 1 is not complying with that order state 1 is not implementing that order the government is not notifying that order then you will go to the supreme court asking the supreme court to enforce the order of the tribunal because the supreme court has these larger powers the supreme court is not deciding on interstate water disputes it is simply enforcing the outcome of interstate water disputes on appeal in rare cases you can come to the supreme court but the supreme court is not your first instance court for interstate water disputes do we understand this excellent so this therefore becomes what is importantly called center state disputes now third sorry because water is one of the closest instruments of federalism and if the supreme court has to hear these matters you cannot guarantee that these matters are going to be heard within a definite amount of time and water not only is a very intimate issue of federalism it's also a time ticking issue every day that the water does not get released there is tangible socio economic impact on the states and that is why you would require specialized courts who would have powers to undertake speedy justice and at the same time water disputes is not a complicated legal problem as much as it is a complicated geographical problem not only would you require legal experts you would also require administrative experts you would also require environmental experts you would also require social activist experts and that's how the tribunals are composed in a manner there is no complicated law when it comes to interstate water disputes the problem is the diversity of it the impact of it and the and the analysis of that that impact is not necessarily legal it is socio economic that is why you would want to create the tribunal on that matter yes but who is placing the tribunal on the higher side he has a very good question does this not mean that the tribunals have been given that exclusive jurisdiction that even the supreme court does not have well technically under plenary powers the supreme court can do anything so that is again a point on the side but the provision that gives the tribunals the power to do what they can do is actually the constitution it is the constitution and the original text of the constitution article 263 is not an addition article 263 has been the original text of the constitution since day 1 the constitution which is the supreme law of the land has given powers to an authority the same way the constitution gives all the powers to the supreme court that the supreme court has the constitution does it 
so it is not done by a parliamentary action it is not done by an executive action it is done by the supreme law and that supreme law justifies the fact that you could create what is called an interstate disputes tribunal theek hai all right it's about who gives you that power if you think about it the gst council and the way the gst council voting works and we'll do this in bodies and federalism completely changes your understanding of federalism the way the voting happens in gst council the decisions of the gst council but the constitution has created the gst council you can always question how do you have the power to do this what makes you the right person to do this but if the constitution is originating that power that means the the buck stops at the constitution you cannot question anything beyond the constitution otherwise it is an endless loop right okay now third often overlooked often misunderstood but very important for the prelims exam Article one hundred and thirty-nine A, added by the forty-second amendment of nineteen seventy-six. This is what is called a transfer petition. Okay. This is what is called a transfer petition. Let's take a minute and understand transfer petitions in detail, if that is okay with all of you. Okay. <clears throat> This is the Supreme Court. This is High Court One. This is High Court Two. This is High Court Three. transfer petition is transferring a case from one high court to another are we clear on this this is one instance of transfer petition it could be transferring from any court of an equal uh, stature to any court so district court of kanpur to district court of bombay high court of bombay to high court of allahabad this is what is called a transfer petition transfer petitions are only the powers of the supreme court now sometimes what happens is why would you even want to transfer these cases because it is more appropriate for high court 2 to, to hear it than high court 1 for logistical reasons or administrative reasons because the issue belongs to that state instead of that state that could be one reason but a very important reason is what if across this court you are discussing an sql sql stands for substantial question of law or a substantive question of law the substantial question of law again a vague term defined by the supreme court through supreme court judgments you don't have to worry about the definition of it but a substantial question of law would mean interpretation of a law interpretation of a term of the constitution it could mean an issue which has a large public impact something where there's a conflict between you know two laws or any of those a, a complicated legal issue there can be a time where this substantial question of law may require an interpretation of the constitution very possible in that scenario what the supreme court can do is transfer the case temporarily to itself interpret the provision and transfer it back that is also possible clear not only can you transfer from one high court to the other if there is a constitutional interpretation the supreme court can bring the case to itself 
and then send it back. Suppose interpretation of 21 was a discussion. That 21 says life and personal liberty. Personal liberty also means entertainment. For example, Supreme Court will bring the case to itself for a month, interpret it and send it back. Because ultimately, this is in the interest of expedited justice. So transfer petitions under Article 139A therefore become a very very important tool of inter-court coordinations. Okay. Now let's spend some time and understand why would you want to do this? Why would a scenario even have a transfer petition? Generally what happens is when a party wants to transfer their case from one court to another a transfer petition is filed before the supreme court it is not necessarily the high court it could be district court one to district court two to district court three that is also possible these district court transfers can also happen by the high court but high court high court transfers can only and only happen by the Supreme Court. Do we understand this? Right? Again, this is complicated legal procedure, so we don't have to worry about it. What we must understand is that there is a scenario where you need to transfer a case from one court to another court. That's the basic premise behind a transfer petition. And generally, transfer petitions are of two types. The first type is a straightforward type when there is a transfer between courts of the same level between states. So it could be district court 1 and district court 2 of the same state, fairly possible. And the second would be a transfer which is between a subordinate court and a superior court. Do we understand this part, the first type? The first type is when there is a transfer between courts at the same level within a state or across states. So my first type would be district court 1 to district court 2 of the same state 1. Second could be district court 1 to district court 2. This is state 1, this is state 2. Ye matrimonial cases mein bahut hota hai. Because this is where the problem is. You will see most transfer petitions in the nature of matrimonial disputes. Clear? कि वो एक दूसरे को परेशान करने के लिए कोई ट्रांसफर पेटिशन इधर डालेगा कोई ट्रांसफर पेटिशन उधर डालेगा आई विल गिव यू रियल एग्जांपल फ्रॉम 3 डेज अगो वी वर एट अ मीडिएशन थर्सडे फ्राइडे इन द मॉर्निंग बिफोर आई लेफ्ट सो देयर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड अ पंचायत डिवोर्स आई डोंट नो इफ यू हर्ड ऑफ इट पंचायत डिवोर्सेस आर इलीगल दिस इज अ रियल केस ऑफ अ ट्रांसफर पेटिशन दैट आई एम एक्सप्लेनिंग टू यू ओके सो बेसिकली व्हाट हैपेंड वाज <clears throat> it is the boy's second marriage. It is the girl's second marriage. The boy was not aware of the girl's second marriage. The girl was aware of the boy's second marriage. The girl's first marriage was, was broken down. And this is in a village called Bilaspur. Not in the central part, the northern part. Yes, there is a Bilaspur in Chhattisgarh. There is also Bilaspur in the north. Himachal. So the panchayat of the Bilaspur village granted the girl divorce from her first marriage. That divorce is illegal under the law. This was not disclosed to the husband. Now, under Hindu law, you cannot marry more than once. So, technically, the marriage that the second time has happened, the, the marriage between the girl and the boy, becomes an illegal marriage. 
it becomes a fraudulent marriage because the girl is still legally not divorced now whatever the nature of the matrimonial disputes might be the girl is in bilaspur the boy is in delhi now the boy has filed complaints in 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 gurgaon the boy has filed complaints in gurgaon courts and gurgaon police stations the girl has filed complaints in bilaspur police stations and therefore bilaspur court her lawyers have filed a transfer petition transferring all the gurgaon cases to the bilaspur high court where have you filed the transfer petition correct aaya samajh mein ye hota hai transfer petition theek hai a very common occurrence now because it's a matrimonial dispute what we generally do is the supreme court has a process called mediation you get compulsorily referred to mediation and supreme court mediation is one of the best in the country people are fair nicer it's not like you know lower courts where everybody is yaha maro kuto nahi nahi supreme court mediations are smoother and therefore nicer अब वो मीडिएशन फेल होगा द गर्ल इज आस्किंग फॉर फोर्टी लैक्स द बॉय इज लैक आई विल ओनली गिव फिफ्टी थाउजेंड रुपीज नाउ वेदर इट इज द गर्ल्स फॉल्ट और द बॉयज फॉल्ट इज इंटायरली अप टू यू टू डिसाइड एंड इन जनरली इन मैट्रीमोनियल केसेज नेवर जज अ बुक बाई इट्स कवर इट विल सीम लाइक द गर्ल इज एट फॉल्ट बट देर इज इनफ रीजन टू बिलीव दैट द बॉय इज ऑल्सो एट फॉल्ट maybe the girl's fault is more but there is there is always there is no smoke without fire in law it's law is never about right and wrong law is always about who's more right and less wrong okay so <laughs> mediation is happening we have a final date next uh, next week or so mediation will fail and the mediator has told the girl side that uh, and and at the boy side also that if you don't agree then the case will carry on for 8 10 years but this is how transfer petitions are used are we clear on this yes pakka now these transfers can be between high court high court between high court and uh, between district court district court between criminal court criminal court between civil court civil court this is the first kind the second kind is this that i'm talking about when there is a substantial question of law this is the second type of a transfer petition where you're transferring from the high court to the separate uh, to the supreme court and please understand this is a temporary transfer this is not appeal a decision has not been given you are temporarily transferring what is called your case do we understand this yes now the power to transfer a case it is temporary transfer and what is important about this particular setup is you are not appealing against a decision because no decision has been made yet You are basically transferring, saying, "Ye bahut badi baat hai. Ham log bade loon ko dekhne do." This requires an interpretation. Even if whatever interpretation you will give as the High Court, the Supreme Court will anyways be approached. So, might as well let's go to the Supreme Court. A transfer petition and a special leave petition and an appeal petition are three completely different things. They are not the same. A transfer petition is. pre decision it is pre verdict and it requires a substantial question of law all right now once we understand this you also have to then understand the source of powers of course 139a is your primary source but there are largely two kinds of cases in the country you have civil cases and criminal cases so the transfer powers of the supreme court is not just in the constitution 
it is also in your civil procedure code and your new criminal procedure code and in the exam you can write this as new criminal procedure a lot of people may not get the hindi terms right a lot of people may not be able to write the bhartiya nyay sanhita act especially people from down south because these are technical hindi terms it is unfair to them so you can write the new criminal code the new criminal procedure code that is also perfectly okay do we understand this are we fine with this excellent so therefore these are the cases that you have these are the sources of power all right now when you are transferring from one high court to another high court or one court of the same level to another court of the same level right now generally what ends up happening is if it is because of 139a if you are if, if you are reaching for a transfer because of 139a it is a very very vague ground called in the interest of justice insaf ke hit mein hum ye kar rahe hai and this is a very old case where this interest of justice was coined the case is called ram jeth malani versus menka gandhi menka gandhi versus ram jeth uh, malani menka sanjay gandhi versus ram jeth malani 1978 it is in this case where the court clarified that interest of justice simply does not mean logistical convenience कि तुम लोग को बम्बई आना ज्यादा पसंद है तो चलो बम्बई में ही लड़ लो इस बहान में थोड़ा सा मुंदर भी देख लेना नहीं देर हैज टू बी अजिटमेट रीजन दैट इट इज बेटर फॉर द केस टू बी हर्ड इन दैट कोर्ट ना वॉट एट हैपन्ड इन द मेनका गांधी वर्सेज राम जेठ मलानी केस रानी जेठ मलानी नॉट इवन राम जेठ मलानी नाउ आई रिमेंबर Rani Jeth Malani is of course related to Ram Jeth Malani. Ram Jeth Malani is one of was one of India's greatest criminal lawyers, notorious yet a legal genius, right? Now, Ram Jeth Rani Jeth Malani, who was a lawyer, had basically accused Minka Gandhi. Uh, she used to run a magazine called Surya, and she had accused Minka Gandhi for defamation. that whatever you are writing is going to cause a lot of reputational damage the case was being heard at the bombay high court because the magazine surya was published and printed in bombay so bombay high court now a transfer was sought to delhi since both parties were in delhi obviously rani jeth malani and menka gandhi would be living in delhi but she was the editor of a magazine which was being published in bombay the court rejected the transfer ki tum delhi mein rehte ho kand bombay mein hua hai to isliye nahi hoga there has to be a larger interest of justice do we understand this correct pakka now apart from this this will not be asked in the prelims exam section 25 of the civil procedure code allows for interstate transfers and second is you also have uh, section 406 of the crpc the new one also retains the same section number which is again transfer for criminal cases theek hai ab grounds for civil cases and grounds for criminal cases aapke liye important nahi to jo matrimonial cases hote hain ye divorce wale which are transferred they are transferred under section 25 of cpc matrimonial violence which is a crime is transferred under section 406 of crpc lekin ye jo defamation wale pange hain rights wale pange hain wo jayenge 139 a local pressure ho sakta hai threat ho sakta hai from the other side the police is not being cooperative uh one of the two parties has a job there is have a means of livelihood there ye sawar kyu karte ye samajh mein aaya are we clear on this so this is what is called a transfer petition 
you are transferring from one court to another same level same uh, hierarchy within a state across states or a temporary transfer to the supreme court can interpret the clause send it back but again remember a transfer petition is not an appeal are we clear on this understood theek now <coughs> fourth original jurisdiction again you know this but you have never categorized it article 71 elections to the president and the vice president can only and only be heard by the supreme court do we understand this now take a quick check and see how much of this is applicable to the high courts yahan tak clear ho gaya pehle to dekh lo kya kya bilkul applicable nahi hai this is not applicable to high courts that constitutional transfer is not applicable to high courts president and vice presidential transfer is not applicable to high courts in a different form article 226 rights are applicable to high courts do we understand this are we clear on this excellent this is enough for me to answer a question the supreme court and the high court do not have equal the powers of the supreme court to review its cases versus the powers of the high court to review its cases will depend on the nature of cases that you can hear a high court cannot review a center state dispute case because you cannot hear it in the first place can the supreme court do so yes do we understand the difference are we clear on this this is what is called your original jurisdiction ye actually char cheezon mein aata hai are we clear on this theek hai all right now appellate jurisdiction aur appellate ke sath sath i will also dis discuss review petitions and curative petitions because finally they are issues of appeal theek appellate jurisdiction now appellate jurisdiction again is very very diverse you have articles 132 133 134 article numbers don't have to be memorized these are effectively to deal with appeals so 132 would be civil criminal and other 133 would be civil 134 would be criminal but the basic idea is you are appealing from a lower court appellate jurisdiction is always from the supreme court from the high court to a supreme court always the exception to this would be in some case where you have a tribunal on appeal you can go to the supreme court and that is why management of tribunal issues is a problem theek hai because if an appeal from a tribunal can go directly to the supreme court it is been done through a parliamentary law पार्लियामेंट्री लॉ एक सुप्रीम कोर्ट के जूरिस्डिक्शन पे सवाल उठा रही दैट इज वाई मैनेजमेंट ऑफ ट्राइब्यूनल इज अ मेजर इशू विल कम टू दैट लेटर इट्स अ सेपरेशन ऑफ पावर्स इशू बट इन ऑर्डिनरी केसेस अपेलेट जूरिस्डिक्शन मीन्स अपील फ्रॉम द हाई कोर्ट टू द सुप्रीम कोर्ट और इसकी एक कंडीशन है एक कंडीशन द हाई कोर्ट 
must necessarily give you a certificate of appeal certificate of appeal ye certificate agar high court se nahi milega aap appeal nahi kar sakte aur agar high court ye certificate aapko na de that is why you have article 136 special leave petitions ab samajh mein aaya this is the conceptual clarity behind the process now let us spend some time on this you will generally have a civil appeal and you will have a criminal appeal is that correct you will generally have a civil appeal and you will have a criminal appeal ab ye civil appeal or criminal appeal high court pe bhi lagega supreme court pe bhi lagega yahan se kabhi bhi prelims mein question nahi aate बिकॉज ये बहुत प्रोसीजरल है दिस इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन सी पी सी सी आर पी सी कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बाई लॉज इसलिए कभी नहीं आते आपको बस मोटा मोटा इतना आना चाहिए कि सिविल अपील होता क्या है क्रिमिनल अपील होता क्या है वॉट इज द जनरल मिनिमम प्रोसीजर कॉमनली एप्लीकेबल ठीक है अ सिविल अपील इज फाइल्ड इन द सुप्रीम कोर्ट टू अपील अगेंस्ट एनी जजमेंट any order any decree these are all forms of judgments of a high court in india okay now a civil appeal can only be filed if the high court which has issued the judgment grants a certificate of the fitness of appeal aur ye 60 din ke andar appeal file ho jani chahiye सिविल अपील्स हैव टू बी फाइल्ड विद इन सिक्सटी डेज ऑफ द सर्टिफिकेट विच इज बीन ग्रांटेड ठीक है और ये साठ दिन सुप्रीम कोर्ट रूल्स में लिखे हुए हैं रिमेंबर सुप्रीम कोर्ट रूल्स द सुप्रीम कोर्ट एंड द हाई कोर्ट हैव द पावर्स टू फ्रेम देयर ओन रूल्स इट इज अंडर सुप्रीम कोर्ट रूल्स इफ आई रिमेंबर करेक्टली इट इज ऑर्डर नाइनटीन ऑफ सुप्रीम कोर्ट रूल्स अगेन एग्जाम में नहीं आएगा मैं बस ऐसे ही शो ऑफ कर रहा हूं ठीक है पक्का अब इसको लेके जरा परेशान मत हो बिकॉज कई बार 60 डेज ब्रीच हो जाते हैं देन यू हैव अ कॉन्डनेशन एप्लीकेशन दैट यू फाइल कि भाई गलती हो गई बीमार पड़ गए थे ताऊ ताई बीमार थे लेट हो गया अब ले लो बट अंडर नॉर्मल सर्कमस्टांसिस सिक्सटी डेज ठीक ना <clears throat> this is a civil appeal necessarily from a high court to a supreme court correct but from any court in the country you can also come to the supreme court under article 136 special leave petitions this is how special leave petitions are a very different form of an appeal a you can come from any lower court b irrespective of whether the high court grants you a certificate of appeal farak samajh mein aaya isliye special leave petitions are little more difficult theek hai isme se kuch bhi guaranteed nahi hai the supreme court can dismiss your slp also can say that we are not going to admit it we'll come to that in a while are we clear on this theek hai all right now there are two grounds on which the high court can issue a certificate of appeal kis basis pe kar sakte one is 132 and one is under 133 the high court is issuing a certificate of fitness of appeal that the case is fit to be appealed to the supreme court under article 132 or 133 which are constitutional provisions for the supreme court ye samjhe 132 supreme court ke chapter mein likha hai lekin use kon kar raha hai high court 
इंटीग्रेटेड जुडिशरी ये समझ में आया 132 एंड 133 थर्टी टू एंड वन थर्टी थ्री आर अपील पावर्स टू द सुप्रीम कोर्ट बिना हाईकोर्ट के सर्टिफिकेट के हो नहीं सकता तो हाईकोर्ट विल इश्यू अ सर्टिफिकेट अंडर आर्टिकल वन थर्टी टू और आर्टिकल वन हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी थ्री भाई वन थर्टी टू क्या है दिस इज वेन देर इज अबस्टेंशियल क्वेश्चन ऑफ लॉ विद रिस्पेक्ट टू इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन हो सकता है there could be a civil law there could be an interpretation of a constitutional provision a civil law might be conflicting with a constitutional provision ek taraf aap kehte ho freedom of interstate trade and commerce ek taraf aap kehte ho that you have uh, these farm laws you would have these taxation norms you would have these user charges kahin na kahin conflict hoga so allowed 132 is when there is a substantial question of law with regards to the interpretation of the constitution now this substantial question of law and constitutional interpretation can be combined and can be separate for example kisi civil law transfer of property act mein kuch likha hai uska humko interpretation chahiye that is also a substantial question of law Sometimes that interpretation will depend on a constitutional provision. उसका भी interpretation चाहिए. So both of these things are perfectly valid. For example, homosexuality marriage. You are looking at an interpretation of Special Marriages Act, under which people who are homosexuals can get married. and that will only be possible if you interpret the constitution to permit it hai ki nahi that is technically uh, an issue of what is called a civil interpretation of law aap homosexuals ko shaadi karne se allow ya nahi allow tabhi karenge jab constitution is baat ko recognize karega that marriage knows no gender yes or no it is dependent on your interpretation of articles 14 19 and 21 are we clear okay now the second ground is under article 133 this is where there is a substantial question of law of general importance general importance now a general importance matlab for example koi industries act hai कोई वेजेस एक्ट है उसमें किसी प्रोविजन का हमें मतलब चाहिए कि मिनिमम वेजेस कैसे कैलकुलेट कर रहे हैं अरियर्स कैसे कैलकुलेट कर रहे हैं सैलरी कब से कब काउंट होनी चाहिए गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉयज का अरियर का इंटरेस्ट रेट कितना होना चाहिए इट्स अ सब्सटेंशियल क्वेश्चन ऑफ लॉ ऑफ जनरल इंपॉर्टेंस इसके बेसिस पे भी अपील मिल जाता है डू वी अंडरस्टैंड दिस आर वी क्लियर ठीक ना क्रिमिनल अपील्स थोड़े से कॉम्प्लेक्स है बट यू मस्ट अंडरस्टैंड दिस बिकॉज आजकल क्रिमिनल जस्टिस ज्यादा पूछ रहे हैं तो दे हैव जनरली आस्क यू एवरीथिंग दैट दे कुड ऑन क्रिमिनल जस्टिस व्हाट दे आर लेफ्ट टू आस्क यू इज क्रिमिनल अपील सो यू मस्ट अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज अ क्रिमिनल अपील बिकॉज यू राइट नाउ हैव समथिंग कॉल्ड एन ऑटोमेटिक राइट टू क्रिमिनल अपील सो विल कम टू दैट अगेन a criminal appeal is an appeal in the supreme court against the order judgment or decree of a high court in india and a criminal appeal in the supreme court will generally originate in three different ways in three different methods first agar 60 din ke andar aapne appeal file kar di high court ne aapko certificate of fitness of appeal diya aap aa jaiye on any criminal case two in some cases you have an automatic right to appeal usme mere ko koi certificate nahi chahiye tum certificate do ya tum certificate na do mera haq hai is criminal case ko supreme court mein leke jaane ka second scenario third as you know under article 130 
it can be from any lower court high court is also a technically uh, a lower court than the supreme court are we clear on this theek okay. now the grounds are again the same substantial question of law concerning an interpretation of the constitution 132 bhi lagega and 134 under 134 you will generally understand substantial questions of law and not to substantial questions of fact ye bahut important hai substantial questions of law and not substantial questions of fact the appeal procedures are the same aap 132 mein you can go for a criminal appeal substantial question of law requiring constitutional interpretation or 134 a substantial question of law and not a fact इसका मतलब समझो ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है इसका मतलब ये है आप सुप्रीम कोर्ट पे इस बात पे अपील नहीं कर सकते कि क्राइम हुआ था या नहीं हुआ था ये इंसिडेंट हुआ था या नहीं हुआ था कोई फैक्चुअल कंसिस्टेंसी पे नहीं जाएंगे सुप्रीम कोर्ट अंडर ऑर्डिनरी केसेस इज नॉट अ ट्रायल कोर्ट वहां बैठ के वो विटनेस एग्जामिन नहीं करता अंडर ऑर्डिनरी केसेस रेयर केसेस में हो सकता है बट ऑर्डिनरीली नहीं सुप्रीम कोर्ट में कभी भी देखना गवाह नहीं पेश होते आपने इतने सुप्रीम कोर्ट के यूट्यूब वीडियोस देखे होंगे आज तक देखा है कोई गवाह पेश हो रहा है नहीं ये लोअर कोर्ट का काम है चाकू मारा था नहीं मारा था चाकू पे धब्बे थे या नहीं थे उंगलियों के निशान थे या नहीं थे ये सब नीचे डिसाइड हो चुका है अब ये डिसाइड हो रहा है कि आपने चाकू मारा था तो आप गिल्टी हैं या नहीं क्या प्रोसीजर ठीक से फॉलो हुआ था या नहीं हुआ था प्रोसीजर इस्टेब्लिश बाय लॉ ड्यू प्रोसेस ऑफ लॉ हायर कोर्ट्स आर एक्चुअली कोर्ट्स ऑफ प्रोसीजर Courts of constitutionality, courts of interpretation. That is why they are called constitutional courts. Lower courts are called courts of fact, courts of evidence, courts of examination. Sasu mane bahu ki dal me jahar milaya ya nahi milaya. Ye patiala house decide karega. Ye tis hazari decide karega. सुप्रीम कोर्ट नहीं करेगी डू वी अंडरस्टैंड दिस सो वेन यू आर गोइंग ऑन अपील टू द सुप्रीम कोर्ट यू आर नॉट अपीलिंग अ फैक्चुअल कंक्लूजन यू आर अपीलिंग अ लीगल कंक्लूजन डू वी अंडरस्टैंड द डिफरेंस यस ठीक नाउ अंडर 134, थर्टी फोर देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड एन ऑटोमेटिक राइट टू अपील तो मुझे सर्टिफिकेट दो या ना दो ठीक है बहुत ध्यान से सुनना एन ऑटोमेटिक राइट टू अपील इज व्हेन द हाई कोर्ट हैज सेंटेंस्ड समवन टू डेथ एक होता है कॉन्फर्मेशन ऑफ डेथ सेंटेंस सेशंस कोर्ट ने डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोर्ट ने फांसी की सजा सुना दी डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोर्ट से नीचे तो सजा सुना ही नहीं सकते वी हैव डिस्कस दिस डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोर्ट ने फांसी की सजा सुना दी हाई कोर्ट ने कंफर्म कर दी वो अलग सिनारियो है ये सिनारियो है हाई कोर्ट ने आपको डेथ सेंटेंस दिया है मतलब हाई कोर्ट इज हियरिंग दिस केस ऑन अपील राइट नाउ दिस ऑटोमेटिक राइट टू अपील वे यू डू नॉट रिक्वायर अ सर्टिफिकेट ऑफ अपील फ्रॉम द हाई कोर्ट in matters of criminal nature applies to when high court gives you death sentences sentences you to death ab isko bahut dhyan se sunna just because you have been given a death sentence does not necessarily mean you have the right to appeal ye tabhi hota hai agar trial court ne chhod diya स्टेट ने अपील करा हाई कोर्ट और हाई कोर्ट ने ट्रायल कोर्ट का डिसीजन रिवर्स कर दिया 
और कहा नहीं नहीं इसको फांसी मिलनी चाहिए आर वी क्लियर ऑन दिस यस या तो हाई कोर्ट ने लोअर कोर्ट से ट्रांसफर कर लिया केस अपने पास या हाई कोर्ट ने लोअर कोर्ट ने का डिसीजन ओवरटर्न कर लिया कौन सा डिसीजन लोअर कोर्ट ने बोला घर जाओ हाई कोर्ट ने बोला नहीं नहीं फांसी पे लटकाओ अगर ये है मेरे को कोई सर्टिफिकेट नहीं चाहिए आर वी क्लियर ऑन दिस लोअर कोर्ट गिव यू डेथ पेनल्टी यू ऑन अपील लेट से गिव मी डेथ पेनल्टी आई वेंट ऑन अपील टू हाई कोर्ट ऑफ लेट से डेली हाई कोर्ट ऑफ डेली अपहेल्ड द डिसीजन ऑफ द ट्रायल कोर्ट ऑफ डेली नो ऑटोमेटिक राइट टू अपील बट ट्रायल कोर्ट ऑफ डेली अक्विटेड मी सैड माथो साहब बाइजत बरी घर जाइए द स्टेट ऑफ डेली in this case union of india because law and order is with the home ministry appealed to delhi high court delhi high court said nahi nahi mathu sahab khun ki hai pakka hoga zarur hoga likh ke de raha hu theek hai kiska tera theek are we okay with this now that the delhi high court has given me death penalty i have the automatic right to go to the supreme court to mere ko certificate of appeal do ya nahi do kyunki kyu because i have been sentenced to death penalty for the first time to mera bhi to appeal ka hak banta hai yes or no so either the high court transferred it from lower court of delhi or reversed the acquittal of the lower court of delhi in both these cases i have an automatic right of appeal mere ko kisi bhi hal mein koi certificate kisi liye bhi nahi chahiye ye clear hua yes ek second ha boliye ha transfer petition from one bench of the supreme court to another bench nahi uske liye aapko curative karna padega ki bench mein jhol hai main aata hu us pe yahan tak clear hua theek sure because i have to now do 136 and then pick all appeals up and then do review and curative yahan tak clear ho gaya theek so these are what are called your basic appellate jurisdiction now that we understand what is a basic appellate jurisdiction let us now get into extraordinarily appellate jurisdiction theek hai extraordinary appellate jurisdiction <coughs> there are three words extraordinary appellate and jurisdiction jurisdiction is the power of the court to hear something appeal necessarily has to be from low to high yes and there has to be something extraordinary about it and the only extraordinary uh, jurisdiction that you have in this country is under article 136 which is called special leave petitions okay special leave petitions ab isme extraordinary kya hai first things first you can appeal from any lower court normal appeal mein kya ho raha tha high court to supreme court first any lower court that is my first reason for it being extraordinary my second reason to being it extraordinary is i do not require any certificate of any kind samajh mein aaya because high courts can sometimes deny you to give you a certificate of fitness 
येस और नो दिस इज हाउ इट वर्क ठीक है नाउ नाउ दैट यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस लेट्स गेट इन टू दिस विद लिटिल बिट मोर ऑफ डिटेल बिकॉज एस एल पी इंपॉर्टेंट है फर्स्ट थिंग्स फर्स्ट एन एस एल पी कैन बी अगेंस्ट द ऑर्डर ऑफ एनी जजमेंट ऑफ एनी कोर्ट और एनी ट्राइब्यूनल आपको तीन चीजें साथ में लेके चलनी है देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड ट्रांसफर पिटिशन देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड अपेलेट जूरिस्डिक्शन एंड देर इज नाउ समथिंग कॉल्ड एस एल पी यस ट्रांसफर पिटिशन में केस पेंडिंग है चल रहा है इट इज लाइक प्रोहिबिशन दिस इज लाइक सरशोरारी कुछ याद आ रहा है The difference between prohibition and certiorari is the difference between transfer petition and any other appeal. Because in certiorari the case has already been decided. In prohibition the case is currently pending. पहला समझ में आया? ठीक है. तो यहाँ case pending है. यहाँ appeal हो रही है. This is appeal necessarily from the. This is again case has been. decided here also case has been decided theek okay? hai no certificate required 100% certificate required in some cases in criminal cases you have a very mild automatic requirement here no certificate required are we clear this transfer petition is from is between similarly placed courts in the country similarly placed courts do we understand this appeal is necessarily from the high court to the supreme court absolutely specially is from any court to the supreme court aaye samajh mein pakka mere ko itna clarity chahiye agar pre mein sawal banega to idhar se banega are we clear on this transfer petitions broad grounds kya hai interest of justice theek hai appellate Substantial question of law may require constitutional importance, interpretation or general importance. यही है ना मोटे मोटे ground. Argue कर लो जिसको जितना करना है And special leave petition is where there is grave or substantial injustice. Grave or substantial in जस्टिस समझ में आया ग्राउंड में इतने फर्क आर वी क्लियर यस एक्सेप्ट ट्रांसफर पिटिशन आर फ्रॉम द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन द सी आर द सीपीसी एंड द न्यू सी आर पी सी तीनों में प्रोविजन है क्रिमिनल में भी तीनों में प्रोविजन होंगे यस और नो अपील्स uh, में भी तीनों में होंगे लेकिन एस एल पी इज ओनली एंड ओनली प्रोवाइडेड फॉर इन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन डू वी अंडरस्टैंड दिस यस और नो ठीक ये क्लियर हुआ ओके okay. चलिए <coughs> क्रिमिनल अपील में 60 डेज का टाइम लिमिट है बिकॉज यहां तो केस पेंडिंग है तो कोई टाइम लिमिट नहीं है राइट right? यहां भी केस डिसाइड हो गया है जनरली 90 डेज का टाइम लिमिट है ठीक है पक्का ऑल राइट नाउ ये कैसे होता है क्यों होता है बहुत ध्यान से समझना ठीक है And SLP can also be filed 
when the high court denies to give you a certificate of fitness of appeal जरूरी है ना अगर हाई कोर्ट सर्टिफिकेट नहीं देगा तो मैं एस के रूट से सुप्रीम कोर्ट के पास पहुंच जाऊंगा बोलूंगा हे प्रभु मेरे को सुन लो ठीक है ना एंड एस एल पी कैन बी फाइल्ड अगेंस्ट एनी जजमेंट ऑफ द हाई कोर्ट विद इन नाइनटी डेज ऑफ इट्स जजमेंट ठीक है नब्बे दिन एंड वेन द हाई कोर्ट refuses to grant a fitness of appeal and slp can be filed between 90 between i think uh, within 60 days of the high court denying you do hi baatein hongi ya to unhone certificate of appeal deny kar diya ya kuch itna bada injustice ho raha hai ki aap directly hi court ke paas ja rahe hain agar bahut bada injustice ho raha hai aap court ke paas directly ja rahe hain to 90 days of the judgment But if the High Court has denied you a certificate of appeal, then within 60 days. क्या ये प्री में आएगा नब्बे सौ नहीं आएगा मेरे को इतना आना चाहिए बेसिक मतलब समझ में आना चाहिए डू वी अंडरस्टैंड दिस फेयर इनफ सो देर फोर आर्टिकल वन थर्टी सिक्स बिकम्स एन एक्स्ट्रॉडनरी जूरिस डिक्शन ऑफ द कोर्ट टू हियर एनी मैटर अगेंस्ट एनी जजमेंट of any court or any tribunal theek hai now the basic difference is slps give the supreme court the discretion to hear them or not it is not compulsory for the supreme court to admit your slp in fact a lot of times slps are dismissed at the admission stage that is generally when we end, end up you know taking senior advocates who have a great standing before the bench to convince the bench that this matter is grave in nature this matter is indeed pressing is nature clear or not so in one line if i have to explain this to you the supreme court exercises its discretionary powers in deciding whether you have to admit the appeal or not when you have a certificate of appeal the supreme court will invariably accept it this also goes back to my foundational discussion this is why the qualifications to becoming a supreme court and a high court judge are more or less the same when it comes to number of years as an advocate this is why the supreme court and the high court are constitutional courts this is why the high courts are not considered as inferior courts and which is why writs cannot be issued against high courts so if the high court is issuing you a certificate of fitness of appeal the supreme court will not deny that certificate because if that happens the supreme court is undermining the high court's ability and the high court's competence to determine whether this case is worthy of the time of the supreme court or not but an slb is the ultimate jurisdiction of the supreme court especially if petition can be accepted can be denied can also often be denied with costs costs meaning the supreme court can sometimes impose costs that this could be frivolous in nature you are wasting precious time of the supreme court and so on and so forth right so supreme court will grant special leave why is it called special leave because you are taking leave from any court acha chalta hu duaon mein yaad rakhna main wapas aaunga yahan are you clear on this samajh mein aaya theek now comes the important part when the supreme court is hearing a special leave petition it is not invoking its pure appellate jurisdiction 
इट इज नॉट इन बुकिंग वॉट इज कॉल्ड इट्स प्योर अपेलेट जूरिस्टिक्शन बिकॉज यूर अपेलेट जूरिस्टिक्शन इज वन थर्टी टू वन थर्टी थ्री एंड वन हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी फोर इट इज इन बुकिंग इट्स डिस्क्रेशनरी रेसिड्यूअल पावर्स इफ द यूनियन लेजिस्लेचर हैज रेसिडरी पावर्स ओवर सेवन स्केड्यूल द सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज रेसिड्यूअल पावर्स इन एन इंटीग्रेटेड जुडिशियल सिस्टम डू वी अंडरस्टैंड दिस सो वेन यू आर डिसाइडिंग द एडमिशन ऑफ एन एस एल पी that is not the exercise of appellate jurisdiction mere ko slp accept karna hai ya nahi hai ye meri discretionary power hai ye mera residual power hai once i have accepted the slp then it becomes an appeal it is only after the slp has been accepted do we understand the difference this is why it is optional this is why this is why slps can be dismissed cannot even be admitted do we understand this are we sure excellent to isko kehte hain extraordinary appellate jurisdiction theek hai then you have something yahan tak clear ho gaya pakka okay ना <coughs> कहानी क्या है कहानी है लेट स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द लोअर कोर्ट सो यू हैव अ लोअर कोर्ट यू हैव अ डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोर्ट यू हैव अ हाई कोर्ट यू हैव अ सुप्रीम कोर्ट ये हमारा मेन हाईवे है एक हमने छोटा सा हाईवे बना रखा है यहां पे ट्राइब्यूनल चिल कर रहे हैं यस और नो और एक दूसरे सड़क पर बना रखा है यहां स्पेशल कोर्ट्स चिल कर रहे हैं फैमिली कोर्ट्स एमपी एमएलए कोर्ट्स फास्ट ट्रैक कोर्ट्स राइट अब एक आम इंसान सरकारी नौकरी वाला इंसान जिसको लेफ्ट राइट समझ में नहीं आता वो सरकारी नौकरी करना चाहता है बिल्कुल ट्रेडिशनल आदमी है क्या करेगा यहां से शुरू करेगा लोअर कोर्ट टू डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोर्ट डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोर्ट टू हाई कोर्ट हाई कोर्ट टू सुप्रीम कोर्ट यहां तक उसके बच्चे हो जाएंगे यहां तक उसके बच्चों के बच्चे हो जाएंगे यहां तक उसके बच्चों के बच्चे हो जाएंगे करेक्ट दिस इज ए रेग्यूलर फॉर्म ऑफ अपील यस नो प्रॉब्लम आप कुछ कुछ केसेस में डायरेक्टली हाई कोर्ट और डायरेक्टली सुप्रीम कोर्ट जा सकते हो दिस इज ओरिजिनल जूरिस्टिक्शन राइट नाउ समटाइम्स द सुप्रीम कोर्ट कैन ट्रांसफर दीज केसेस टू अनदर हाई कोर्ट फ्रॉम वन डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोर्ट टू अनदर डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोर्ट दिस इज अ ट्रांसफर पिटिशन यहां तक समझ में आया करेक्ट यहां से यहां जा रहे हैं सर्टिफिकेट लगेगा पास लगेगा वीआईपी पास जब तक ये वीआईपी पास नहीं देंगे ये सुनेंगे नहीं करेक्ट यस एंड देन यू हैव दिस एक्स्ट्रॉर्डनरी पावर कि आप सीधा फ्लाइट लेके भी आ सकते हो तैर के भी आ सकते हो भाग के भी आ सकते हो उड़ के भी आ सकते हो यस खोद के भी आ सकते हो करेक्ट मेरे को कोई सर्टिफिकेट नहीं चाहिए ये क्या हो गया स्पेशल लीव पिटिशन कहानी यहां आके रुक गई यस और नो अब यहां क्या हो रहा है यू हैव केसेस विच आर ओरिजिनल यू हैव केसेस विच आर ऑन अपील यस यू मे समाइम्स हैव केसेस विच आर एस एल पीज राइट यस और नो इसके बाद क्या बस फॉर एग्जाम्पल 
माइन वॉज अ फंडामेंटल राइट वायलेशन मैं सुप्रीम कोर्ट के पास गया दो जज ने बोला आ भाई तेरा कुछ ना वायलेट हुआ घर जाऊंगा ओके सर बस क्या मेरा तो कट गया ना ये यहां से बेचारा चार बार उसको ना मिला मेरे को तो यहां पहली बार ना मिला विच इज वाई यू हैव विद इन द सुप्रीम कोर्ट फ्रेमवर्क यू हैव टू फाइनल चेक पॉइंट वन इज कॉल्ड अ रिव्यू पेटिशन द अदर इज कॉल्ड अ क्यूरेटिव पेटिशन समझ में आ रहा है अ रिव्यू पेटिशन एंड अ क्यूरेटिव पेटिशन ये कहानी ओरिजिनल और अपेलेट को मिला के है अंडरस्टूड अब इसके बाद मैं कुछ नहीं कर सकता आप ही का लक खराब है आई एम सॉरी अब लटकेंगे तो लटकेंगे आर वी क्लियर ऑन दिस विच इज वाई माई देन डिस्कशन बिकम्स अ डिस्कशन बिटवीन a review petition and what is called a curative petition a review petition and a curative petition ye means mein nahi aata because isme kuch analysis nahi hai you could use this as a means of judicial transparency and accountability but pre mein bhi bahut basic line hi chahiye bahut complicated nahi chahiye theek hai All right. So let us now first understand what is called a review petition. Okay. <clears throat> a review petition is filed before the Supreme Court when a party asks the court to decide the validity of an earlier order of an earlier judgment. of the supreme court itself whenever you are talking about a review petition or a curative petition it is always about the decision of the supreme court isi ko review kar rahe ho ab ab review to tab karoge jab aapke paas review karne ki power hogi that's exactly what happened yesterday the supreme court reviewed its judgment in the pv narsimha rao case and said that no no bribery will not be an allowed privilege to mps and mlas review hi to kiya hai yes but uske review aur is review mein kya farak hai when we talk about the review petition here you are reviewing your own judgment the same judgment रिव्यू के दो मतलब होते हैं आपका कोई पुराना जजमेंट है गोलकनाथ को रिव्यू करके केशवानंदा भारती बना और दूसरा हुआ केशवानंदा भारती को ही रिव्यू करके कुछ और बना दिया यू अंडरस्टैंड द टू मीनिंग्स ऑफ रिव्यू रिव्यू मीनिंग दैट द सुप्रीम कोर्ट इज गिविंग अ न्यू जजमेंट ऑन अ न्यू केस ओवरटर्निंग इट्स अर्लियर जजमेंट दैट इज वन मीनिंग ऑफ रिव्यू the second meaning of review is the court is reviewing its own judgment the same judgment that some judge of the same judgment give pakka to review petition ka matlab do hai hum jis ki baat kar rahe hain hum keh rahe hain usi case ko apne dobara suna usi case ko apne dobara check kiya now whether it is reviewing an earlier judgment or reviewing the same judgment you are ultimately performing the function of review article 137 the court has the powers to review its own judgment do we understand this yes ye samajh mein aaya pakka review ke do matlab hai purana judgment humne naya kar diya kesananda bhar shankri prasad was decided by supreme court yes or no Sajjan Singh was decided by Supreme Court, yes or no? Golaknath was decided by the Supreme Court, yes or no? Keshananda Bharti was decided by the Supreme Court. A higher bench has reviewed an earlier judgment 
and given an updated judgment. Shankri Prasad was five. Sajjan Singh was seven. Golaknath was eleven. Kesananda Bharti was thirty. That is a that is an intra supreme court appellate review. ऐसा बोलना चाहो तो. It's an intra supreme court appellate review. But this review that we are talking about is that the court is reviewing the same judgment that it gave and checking if there were any errors. फर्क समझ में आया ये दोनों चीजें वन थर्टी सेवन की वजह से हो रही है बिकॉज द सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज द पावर्स टू रिव्यू इट्स जजमेंट नहीं यू विल हैव मोर नंबर ऑफ जजेस बट नॉट नेसेसरीली हायर बेंच ठीक है ओके यस पंद्रह यस मतलब थर्टीन एंड मोर तो चाहिए ही ना थर्टीन एंड मोर तो चाहिए उसके बिना नहीं कर पाओगे इन अ केस कॉल्ड जीवी इंडस्ट्रीज वर्सेस यूनियन ऑफ इंडिया 2011 इट इज रिटर्न दैट द कोर्ट हैड गिवन अ कमेंट दैट इफ यू वांट टू चेंज बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर यू विल हैव टू सेट अप अनदर कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंट असेंबली फॉर डूइंग द सेम द जुडिशरी कैन से देर इज नो लॉन्गर समथिंग कॉल्ड बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर दैट इज पॉसिबल but anybody but the judiciary does not have the powers to you will have to create a new constituent assembly or you know conduct a referendum and those extra constitutional measures wo humne basic structure mein discuss bhi kiya hai aise theek all right aage chale chaliye now see usually the supreme court is asked to decide cases on appeal usually usually and this is when the party is challenging the decision of a lower court to a higher court very simple but the grounds for accepting a review petition are far more limited than accepting for an appeal petition because ab aap supreme court se keh rahe ho ki aap se is case mein galti hui hai isi case ko sudharo you have to make your errors in the current case better okay so when you are trying to do any form of review it's either going to be a civil review or it is going to be a criminal review generally yahi hoga the grounds for a civil review petition is when there is an error which is apparent on the face of record a very simple apparent error aapne ye testimony nahi dekhi aapne ye argument nahi include kara aapne ye document nahi check kiya so there is a basic error aapse galti hui hai kesananda bharti mein kabhi aap ye nahi bologe ki golaknath walon se galti hui hai kal wale case mein ye nahi bologe ki pv rao aur asma rao saab ki judgment mein galti hui hai yahan bol rahe ho aapse गलती हुई देर इज एन एरर दैट आपने ये नहीं देखा यू डिड नॉट कंसिडर दिस क्रूशल पॉइंट वाइल डिलीवरिंग अ जजमेंट आर वी क्लियर ऑन दिस यस नाउ इट कुड बी दिस एरर कुड बी ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ लॉ इट कुड बी ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ फैक्ट कुछ भी हो सकता है ठीक है हाउ एवर क्रिमिनल केसेस में रिव्यू का और भी कम स्कोप है where they generally look at grounds for which for which there is something called an apparent error a simple ground called an apparent error ab ye iske bahut technicality mein discussions hai but wo aapko karne ki zarurat hai nahi theek hai ab ye kaise hota hai kyun hota hai samajh lo when a judgment of the supreme court is issued everybody gets a party every party who's who's to the judgment every person involved in the case will get a copy of the judgment an official copy of the judgment from the date that you receive the copy of the judgment or the order 
you have 30 days to file a review petition correct 30 days and the primary source of a review petition as i was telling you is article 137 allows the supreme court to review judgments or orders that the court has itself delivered it could be the same judgment it could be an earlier judgment which is why court of court of review court of record and contempt of court are all related to one another are we fine with this so your primary power comes from article 137 your secondary power comes from article 145 the supreme court may make rules specifying the grounds for reviewing a judgment or an order ये 145 में clearly लिखा हुआ है, ठीक है? Understood? And if required, because Supreme Court powers can still be controlled by the Parliament through a law, checks and balances, these rules can be overridden by the Parliament, ठीक है? Rule number four, checks and balances, ठीक है? For example, June 2021, the Supreme Court had rejected a review petition which wanted for reconsideration of the Supreme Court uh, Marath Maratha Reservations case. The Supreme Court rejected it saying where the Supreme Court had held that the states did not have the power to identify backward classes and in response to this, the Parliament in August 2021 enacted an amendment to restore the powers of the states but reject kar diya tha sabri mala mein review petition abhi bhi pending hai you are reviewing your own judgment kesonanda bharti is not reviewing golaknath in the sense of reviewing the same judgment it is a fresh judgment do we understand this theek hai now the Supreme Court rules give you a detailed guideline on how can you file a review petition, what are the documents you have to attach and all of those things. But generally, you have to show what is called uh, an apparent or a very substantial error that the court has sort of conducted or has overlooked or has not taken into account. Okay? Review petition में generally क्या होता है and यही थोड़ी सी problematic बात है जो bench decide करती है ठीक है उसी bench में आप और judges add कर सकते हो and the same people review their own case judges are dominantly the same क्योंकि आप supreme court की नियत पर शक नहीं कर रहे हो आप कह रहे हो कि देखो आपने ये देखा नहीं ये डॉक्यूमेंट कंसिडर नहीं किया अगर आप ये डॉक्यूमेंट कंसिडर कर लेते तो आपका जजमेंट ठीक आना था जज भी तो इंसान ही है दैट्स एग्जैक्टली व्हाट हैपन सो इन अ रिव्यू पेटिशन द जजेस हु हैड ओरिजिनली डिसाइडेड द केस नथिंग विल हैपन टू देम डू वी अंडरस्टैंड दैट यू कैन ऐड मोर जजेस and maybe a larger bench can sit but the original judges continue pakka curative mahasa nahi hai boss and curative review ke baad hi ho paati hai thik hai to bohut dhyan se dekhna curative petition thoda sa problematic hai all right are we clear with this do we understand this thik hai a curative petition is the last judicial remedy available in this country. The curative petition powers is nowhere mentioned in the constitution whatsoever. This has been invented by the judiciary as a method to make the judiciary more accountable 
in the case of hurra versus hurra a case that i gave you in reference for determining whether higher judiciary is state and it is hurra versus hurra in 2002 where the court determined that an order of a high court cannot be challenged in the supreme court on the grounds that it violates article 32 do you remember that ye humne article 12 mein kara tha excellent theek so in hurra versus hurra in the year 2002 the supreme court very clearly defined the measures the means the methods of a curative petition now what are the general grounds on curative petition ye grounds se hi aap samajh jayenge first that there is a violation of the principles of natural justice there is a violation of the principles of natural justice basic problem number 2 there is a question of bias against the presiding judge ye samajh mein aaya isliye yahan bench change ho jati hai and how have your principles of natural justice violated there are two rules of natural justice a rule against bias and a rule for a fair hearing if there is a rule if if you have not been given a fair hearing it is the judge's fault if there is a bias somewhere it is the court's fault so you are somewhere attacking the larger integrity of the judges you are saying that there is an inherent problem with the judges not with the case in a review petition the problem lied with examining the documents related to the case in curative petition the problem lies in examining the intent of the judges and that's the functional difference between a review petition and a curative petition and third if there is an abuse of the process of the court theek hai it is generally on these grounds and these grounds are not exhaustive you can add them you can subtract them because ultimately this is a fantastic example of judicial activism for the judiciary hum judicial activism mein pura time kya likhte hain ki wo uska kaam kar rahe hai wo uska kaam kar rahe hai curative petition is a beautiful example amalgamating judicial activism and judicial standards and accountability because abhi tak kya ho raha hai aapne collegium reforms ki baat kari collegium reforms is just making sure that we have a transparent method of appointing judges and just because you have appointed the judges transparently does not necessarily mean that every judgment given by the supreme court is going to be of the highest status order and merit right a transparently appointed judge can still commit a judicial mistake it is fairly possible so while over the last 10 years we have generally spoken about collegium reforms we have spoken about njac we spoken about making judicial appointments and transfers better but what about judicial conduct because in 2011 if i remember the year correctly the parliament had a bill which eventually got lapsed was called the judicial standards and accountability bill where there would be a committee and you could complain against the judges to that committee and then committee would recommend to the parliament to start removal proceedings against the supreme court or the high court judge to my mind and to my wisdom it was an extraordinary idea to bring in greater you would call the highest form of transparency a greater understanding of how the court should be working in this country and this is an amazing ethical and a good governance problem to solve transparent account appointments do play a role in enhancing accountability but accountability is when you are accountable for your actions those actions will happen once you are appointed 
transparent appointments is just the first battle won the larger battle still remains to a large extent not even fought so the judicial standards and accountability bill of 2011 was effectively to make judges accountable for their actions because in the history of this country not a single supreme court judge has ever been removed which is got to say that we've never had a bad judge in the history of this country which theoretically sounds valid statistically may not be the case right and finally the primary job of the judge is to give a judgment based on the merits of the case if there is a compromise on the merits of the case what you have effectively done is compromise the judicial process which is why the supreme court in the hurra versus hurra case rupa hurra versus ashok hurra in 2002 gave the larger decision on curative petitions they invented curative petitions in hurra versus hurra yes so hurra versus hurra and curative petitions have a multi purpose utility for us in the exam one it teaches you enhanced appeals two it teaches you judicial accountability three it teaches you judicial activism but for judiciary up until now our understanding of judicial activism has been that the judiciary is trying to do the job of the executive or the legislature but what we are also trying to understand now is that the judiciary is trying to do the job of the judiciary to make the judiciary better because technically the parliament has the powers to regulate the affairs of the supreme court here the judiciary is trying to do so but again there are of course certain problems but theek hai are we clear on this so post the hurra versus hurra judgment the supreme court rules of 2013 also give you a detailed set of guidelines on this and of course uh, what are the grounds on which you are petitioning uh, generally will what happen is remember i explained to you the the concept of a senior advocate so when you are filing a when you are filing a curative petition one of the first things you have to do is a senior advocate has to give you an attestation that the curative petition matches the requirements of hurra versus hurra you require a certificate from a senior advocate an advocate uh, uh, on record remember as a supreme court advocate on record the only people who are allowed to file cases had to attest that the petition was the only and the first petition which was filed in the case and how you have a 30 day value a curative petition has no specific time limit but it has to be filed within a reasonable amount of time clear understood theek hai and now what will happen generally with curative petitions is a bench of 3 senior most supreme court judges plus the judges who had originally passed the order will consider the petition मतलब ये तीन मिनिमम जजेस तो होने ही चाहिए प्लस द जजेस हु हैड ओरिजिनली पास द केस व्हिच इज आल्सो बाय द वे क्रिटिसिज्म ऑफ द क्यूरेटिव पिटिशन कि तुमको जिसकी इंटीग्रिटी पे शक है तुम उसी को बिठा के बोल रहे हो क्या बेटा तुमने चोरी करी थी जॉनी जॉनी यस पापा आर यू क्लियर ऑन दिस यस and then they will decide whether the case has to be admitted first you will have an admission hearing and after that what you would effectively have is subsequent hearings if needed theek hai one of the recent examples of curative petition that i can give you is from 2023 where the supreme court had rejected a curative petition uh, the case was called union of india versus union carbide bhopal gas tragedy the supreme court was hearing a curative petition on whether more compensation should be given to the victims of the bhopal gas tragedy the supreme court said agar main ye karne lag gaya to phir mera kaam kabhi rukega hi nahi do we understand this yes good so your appellate system is actually a fairly fairly complex system 
it's not that easy there are multiple themes and there are multiple layers to it right which now brings me to the fourth kind of jurisdiction and my fourth jurisdiction is called advisory jurisdiction ye humne president mein bhi kiya hua hai but there is more to advisory than just the president we've done this remember presidential judicial powers theek the two ones that you are the two ones that you are completely aware of are under 143 clause 1 and 143 clause 2 the article numbers don't have to be memorized for the prelims exam but what you must know is what it means under article 143 clause 1 the president can refer a substantial question of law or a substantial question of fact which is of public importance to the supreme court and the supreme court if it wants to can accept to give an opinion can also reject that i do not want to give an opinion this is under article 143 clause 1 now why does the supreme court gets the gets the power get the power to reject a presidential advisory because sometimes this public importance criteria could be used for the wrong reasons you would want to fire a gun on keep on 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 the shoulders of the supreme court and you would say that oh the supreme court says this and therefore why do we do this we do this tomorrow you will challenge and the court will strike it down so this is why you have been given the option to say no where you have not been given the option to say no is under article 143 clause 2 where the president again can refer to the supreme court any matter which is of a pre constitutional nature it is any dispute which is arising out of pre constitutional arrangements any treaty any agreement any covenant ki 1942 mein humne kaha tha up hum nepal ko de denge in 2024 so in 2024 nepal is like bhai bro आपने कहा था हमको दे देंगे किधर है सो देन यू कैन रेफर इट टू द सुप्रीम कोर्ट एंड द सुप्रीम कोर्ट नेसेसरिली हैज टू गिव एन ओपिनियन द सुप्रीम कोर्ट डज नॉट हैव द पावर टू से नो क्लियर बेरूबरी यूनियन इज अ क्लासिक एग्जाम्पल ऑफ दिस इट गोज बैक टू अ प्री कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अरेंजमेंट ऑफ टेरिटोरियल डिविजन बिटवीन इंडिया एंड ईस्ट पाकिस्तान एंड वेस्ट पाकिस्तान ठीक है दिस इज फेयरली सिंपल दिस इज फेयरली क्लियर इज रेलिवेंट फॉर द मेन्स एग्जाम इफ यू आस्क मी इन द प्रेलिम्स ये दिस इज अ स्टैंडर्ड क्वेश्चन दैट कुड बी आस्ट वॉट इज ऑफन मिस्ड विच इज ऑफन मिस्ड टू माई अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड इफ यू रेड योर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन प्रॉपरली आर्टिकल थ्री हंड्रेड एंड सेवेंटीन इज ऑल्सो द नेचर ऑफ एडवाइजरी जूरिस्टिक्शन because the president can refer to the supreme court an inquiry for the removal of upsc or state public service commission members that is technically advisory jurisdiction it is it's just not written in the heading of advisory jurisdiction but you are taking the opinion of the supreme court the second you are taking the opinion of the supreme court the jurisdiction automatically becomes advisory in nature it automatically becomes the nature of you are asking for somebody's opinion right or wrong so therefore what you are effectively looking at is seeking a supreme court opinion on a matter of executive removal that is also advisory jurisdiction are we clear on this yes pakka all right now we have discussed this in broad detail but plenary jurisdiction the word plenary means sarv gun sampann sarv shaktiman avenger powers bhagwan ki shakti that is why we call the plenary session of the general assembly and overall a comprehensive session your plenary jurisdiction of the court 
it will lie under articles 137 and under articles 142 we've discussed this i just want to close the loop here 137 is the power of the supreme court to review any judgment or order pronounced before it this could simply mean the power to review an earlier judgment or the power to review the same judgment and 142 is any person can file a petition before the supreme court for a gross miscarriage of justice or to prevent an abuse of due process of law by a supreme court judgment and curative petitions are an outcome of article 142 yeah you know 142 mein. miscarriage of justice abuse of due process of law and what is the closest that we come to which is curative petitions right so if i go back to my original uh, setup my transfer petitions review petitions and curative petitions are done but but review petition and curative petition have a line connecting to appellate and have a line connecting to plenary and it is only possible because you are a court of jurisdiction understood excellent so if we now understand this then i have to understand two very very important terms and my two important terms are court of record and contempt contempt of course is a judicial issue we'll discuss but court of record and contempt Aaj hum PYQ karenge bhai thode se. And now we'll finish this and then we'll do it tomorrow maybe. I require like one more class for tribunals and uh, alternate dispute resolution tomorrow. But yes, court of record. What is a court of record? Court of record kyu important hai? Court of record hoga to ab review kar paoge. Supreme Court, Court of Record. High Court is a Court of Record. Supreme Court is a Court of Record. This is two meanings. a record of whatever the courts have done and a record of whatever has been done before the courts. A record of whatever the courts have done and a record of whatever has been done before the courts. And a combination of this makes you what is called a court of record. So a record of whatever the courts have done allows the court to review its judgment, allow the courts to be appeal courts, allow the courts to review the same judgment. And whatever has been done before the court, you would have given an affidavit in court, you would have given an undertaking in court, that is a legal record. Aapne court mein kaha ki thik hai ye mein undertaking deta hoon ki mein inki bhaes inko wapas kar dunga. Court mein dhina undertaking. Nahi kiya to. Aapne meri ko court mein bola. Aapne court mein ye submit kara. Jab let's say this is a divorce case. Aapne court mein submit kara ki bhai meri to saal ki inka mein 6 lakh rupay hai. मैं कहां से 40 लाख रुपए मेंटेनेंस दे दूं या 30 लाख रुपए मेंटेनेंस दे दूं कोर्ट में सबमिट किया इस पर कोर्ट डॉक्यूमेंट्स वो आपका इनकम टैक्स रिकॉर्ड निकाल के ले आए गद्दी में छुपा रखा था यू हैव डिसरिस्पेक्टेड द कोर्ट बाय प्रोड्यूसिंग फॉल्स डॉक्यूमेंट्स बिफोर द कोर्ट तो कोर्ट ऑफ रिकॉर्ड से कोर्ट ऑफ रिव्यू और कंटेम्प्ट दोनों निकल के आता है डू वी अंडरस्टैंड दिस यस मेक सेंस वी डन कंटेम्प्ट विल डू दिस इन डिटेल बट जनरली सिविल कंटेम्प्ट एंड क्रिमिनल कंटेम्प्ट सिविल कंटेम्प्ट इज डिसोबिंग अ कोर्ट ऑर्डर 
and criminal contempt is disrespecting the judge you have a contempt of courts act 1971 and in fact it is also a reasonable restriction under 19 clause 2 yes or no but that is it ab mera atma ki shanti se higher judiciary ka jurisdiction powers khatam hua aaya samajh mein इट इज एक्चुअली वेरी मल्टी लेयर बट ये अब क्लियर हुआ कि अच्छा होता कैसे वो स्पेशली पिटिशन है किस लिए वो हाईकोर्ट से एस एल पी आप तभी लोगे जब हाईकोर्ट आपको सर्टिफिकेट ऑफ पी नहीं देगा नहीं तो हाईकोर्ट से एस एल पी लेने का कोई पॉइंट ही नहीं है आपको डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोर्ट से एस एल पी लेनी पड़ेगी सीधा सुप्रीम कोर्ट जाने के लिए सो देन इफ आई डू अ क्विक चेक हां जी एक सेकेंड क्योंकि कोर्ट ऑफ रिकॉर्ड है तो कंटेंट पावर्स है बेजती किसकी कर रहे हो कोर्ट की यस yes. तो एक्शन कौन लेगा कोर्ट यस अंडर वन फोर्टी टू Inherent powers to do justice. So, Porto has multiple powers of origin. One, of course, is contempt. The other is, of course, 142. But यहाँ तक समझ में आया? ठीक. अब क्या Suo Porto powers Supreme Court और High Court दोनों में हैं? Yes or no? Yes. क्या transfer powers Supreme Court High Court दोनों में हैं? No. क्या review petition High Court में हैं? Review petition High Court में कहाँ से होगी? Supreme Court में है. क्या क्यूरेटिव पेटिशन हाई कोर्ट में है नहीं ट्रांसफर पेटिशन सुप्रीम कोर्ट में हाई कोर्ट से ज्यादा है हाई कोर्ट कैन ट्रांसफर फ्रॉम डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोर्ट टू डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोर्ट विद इन द स्टेट बट हाई कोर्ट टू हाई कोर्ट ओनली सुप्रीम कोर्ट ठीक है ओरिजिनल जूरिस्टिक्शन में आ जाइए कम ने कवर कर लिया तो फिर से कवर करते हैं थर्टी की सिमिलर पावर्स टू ट्वेंटी सेवन हाईकोर्ट में है वन थर्टी वन हाईकोर्ट के पास है नहीं है 139 पूरी तरह से है ट्रांसफर नहीं है 71 है नहीं है हाई हाईकोर्ट के पास इलेक्शन रिलेटेड पावर्स क्या है यू हैव इलेक्शन पेटिशन रिगार्डिंग द आउटकम ऑफ इलेक्शन मैनेजमेंट ऑफ इलेक्शन प्रॉब्लम्स गो टू ईसीआई फर्स्ट आउटकम ऑफ एन इलेक्शन इलेक्शन रिलेटेड डिस्प्यूट कि वो ठीक से काउंट नहीं कर रहे थे या रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ पीपल्स एक्ट का वायलेशन था कहा जाओगे High Court. Are we clear on this? Why? Because whether it's a Lok Sabha constituency or an MLA constituency, it's all drawn within state boundaries, and the High Court is the highest judicial organ of the state. It will reduce the pendency. It will reduce the burden on the Supreme Court, and the states are going to feel happy that we have our petitions. But the reality is, the states have negligible role in the appointment of High Court. जजेस यहां तक क्लियर हुआ ठीक है फिर अपील हाई कोर्ट हैज सिविल अपील क्रिमिनल अपील यस डिफरेंट मेथड डिफरेंट मेजर्स बट डज इट हैव सिविल एंड क्रिमिनल अपील यस वेरी गुड एक्स्ट्रॉर्डनरी अपील डज हाई कोर्ट हैव दिस नो नॉट एट ऑल ठीक है यह हमने कंपेरिजन कर लिया ये हमने एक बार देख लिया रिव्यू पेटिशन हाईकोर्ट कर सकता है नहीं क्यूरेटिव पेटिशन हाईकोर्ट कर सकता है नहीं एडवाइजरी जुडिशन है हाईकोर्ट के पास नहीं पक्का जब नहीं है प्लीनरी पावर्स है हाईकोर्ट के पास नहीं है सो दैट मीन्स सुप्रीम कोर्ट पावर्स टू रिव्यू केसेस एंड हाईकोर्ट पावर टू रिव्यू केसेज दे आर नॉट द सेम बिकॉज द नेचर ऑफ केसेस इज डिफरेंट ये समझ में आया ये यूपीएससी का एक ट्रिक क्वेश्चन था दैट द हाई कोर्ट कैन रिव्यू इट्स केसेस जस्ट द वे द सुप्रीम कोर्ट कैन नो बिकॉज वॉट द सुप्रीम कोर्ट कैन रिव्यू हाई कोर्ट कैन नॉट रिव्यू आर वी क्लियर ऑन दिस सो नाउ वी आर ओके विद वॉट इज कॉल्ड जूरिस्टिक्शन बोलिए हा है 
बट नॉट द सेम रेंज आई कोर्ट इज अ कोर्ट ऑफ रेकॉर्ड हाई कोर्ट कैन रिव्यू इट्स अर्लियर जजमेंट यस बट द नेचर ऑफ दोज जजमेंट आर रिस्ट्रिक्टेड नो हाई कोर्ट विल नेवर हैव अ सेंटर स्टेट डिस्प्यूट हाई कोर्ट विल नेवर हैव अ प्रेसिडेंशियल वाइस प्रेसिडेंशियल डिस्प्यूट कैन द हाई कोर्ट हैव अ रिव्यू ऑफ इट्स अर्लियर जजमेंट यस बट डू द हाई कोर्ट हैव रिव्यू पिटिशन फॉर द सेम जजमेंट लाइक द सुप्रीम कोर्ट Does the high curative is also a form of review? Do high courts have curative petitions? No. The most important article for high courts is 227 and 228. जितनी भी ancillary power है high court की, वो यहाँ से निकल के आती है. ठीक है? एक बार इसको बहुत ध्यान से पढ़ना. ठीक है? बोलो. तो तीन चार बहुत होता है प्रेसिडेंट वाइस प्रेसिडेंशियल इलेक्शन नहीं देख सकते सेंटर स्टेट नहीं देख सकते क्यूरेटिव नहीं कर सकते नहीं कर सकते ना फिर एडवाइजरी नहीं है देर इज नथिंग कॉल्ड गवर्नर कैन टेक दिनियन ऑफ द हाई कोर्ट अगर तुम प्रोपोर्शनल भी लेते तो फिर समझ में आया ठीक है डन We'll finish judiciary tomorrow. Tribunals and alternate dispute resolution need two days for federalism and three days for separation of powers. We are sorted. ठीक है. Done. All right. चलो. My notes हो गए. अब मैं free हो गया. अब मैं भेज दूँगा. ठीक है. मेरे को भी थोड़ा दो दिन चाहिए था. Sir, done.